And, um, and, and what I mean by that is I'm not sure in normal times that Barack Obama could have been elected President of the United States, but these are not normal times, and I think that helped uh, in Obama's election. And I would say, as I look at the Obama transition today, he looks to be doing exactly what George W. Bush did in 2000. And when Bush took over in 2001, everything the Clinton administration had done, every policy it made, uh, to the extent that they could, would be reversed. Uh, Clinton uh, didn't have a foreign policy that was, you know, that you could talk about as a, as a doctrine. He was very pragmatic. The Bush foreign policy was very ideological. Clinton had a number of regulations that he passed at the end. The Bush people tried to reverse them. Andrew Card sent a memo around that everything has been put on hold till we have a time to examine it, which was fine. Uh, obviously, uh, the White House transition was certainly much better under George Bush, much more professional than it was under Bill Clinton. In other words, the Bush people changed everything. The Clinton was bad and Bush was good. They were elected, they changed, and that's part of our democratic values. Well, today I would argue that everything Bush has done or most of the things that President Bush have done, both in tone and in substance, are going to be changed by the new administration. During the campaign, uh, Barack Obama complained about, wanted to change, and he not only wanted to change policy, but he wanted to change politics. And by that he meant try to tone down the strident, ideologically oriented partisan rhetoric. And I do think that that, that uh, plea uh, and uh, some of the appointments that he's made now uh, are an attempt to forge a kind of bipartisan coalition on basic uh, needs of the country. Bush was a neoconservative, certainly in foreign policy, and fairly traditional conservative, except for the, the debt dimension in domestic policy. And I think uh, Barack Obama is going to be, Barack Obama is anti-ideological. He's not, a, he may be a liberal at heart, but he's not a liberal at mind. And he's going to govern from the middle, not from the left, uh, and certainly not from the right. He's going to be very pragmatic and try to be progressive. And where President Bush showed, certainly in the second term, consistency to the point of inflexibility, I think uh, President uh, Obama, when he becomes president, will be very adaptable. Where Bush was, wanted to pursue his principles and his policy without compromise, except, except for the No Child Left Behind legislation, and the last year where the economic conditions have forced him to compromise on a stimulus bill and may force him now to uh, compromise his principles on the bailout of the automobile people since that failed uh, last night. Um, where is he, uh, Obama's compromise is basically what he's all about. Finding a common middle ground, finding a consensus, and building incrementally on that consensus. Where Bush tended to be much more unilateral and the White House was very closed, Obama has, is much more into multilateral diplomacy at home and abroad. He's uh, where Bush uh, in his White House and his cabinet surrounded himself with true believers. Obama has surrounded himself with uh, people with experience and with substantive knowledge, and the real problem he's going to have is, is keeping them all on the same wavelength because they're all very independent thinkers, and they all, uh, probably many of them, have big, big egos, and uh, he's going to have to try to rein them in. Bush didn't have those problems. When people fell off the reservation, first they were warned and then they were fired, be it Colin Powell, uh, or uh, Christy Todd Whitman, or Paul O'Neill. 
For President Bush, as I said, actions always spoke louder than words. Um, President uh, Obama is going to put more emphasis on talking and negotiations and reaching a consensus and compromise. So I think what we are going to see is, an, and we frequently do see this, uh, a new president coming in and thinking that the old president screwed things up and he's got to behave in a very, very different manner if he's going to be successful. We don't know if he's going to be successful. So what are the lessons, finally, that we learn from the Bush experience? Well, I think uh, a major lesson, lesson to be learned is that you have to adopt your views to changing situations. Secondly, I think you have to adopt, change your rhetoric when the realities that people are seeing on television, when their perceptions are very different from what you said that they might be. Thirdly, you really need to surround yourself with the best minds and not be so insecure that you don't feel that you can handle a complex argument, that you can deal with ambiguity. Um, it's true that the press is going to pick apart the Obama administration as it picked apart the Clinton administration. But still, the, the be-all and end-all are the conditions on the grounds that we face. And if those conditions go sour, you've got to try to address them, even if it means you have to change your policy. And one very, very important lesson to learn is that presidents always run into trouble when they personalize policy decisions. That's the worst thing, because once you personalize a decision, your ego is involved in it, you become more resistant to change, and uh, be it uh, uh, what happened in Watergate, or what happened in Vietnam, or what happened in Iraq, Personalizing public decisions is not a good thing. Now, one of the criticisms of Barack Obama is, you know, that he's kind of an elitist, and I certainly think that if you looked at the people he appointed, that would be reinforced. Uh, but the other thing about Obama, and this is where he really differs from uh, both uh, George W. Bush and especially from Bill Clinton, he's not particularly emotive. You know, he he. It, he, he'll listen to you, but it's like Bill Clinton, if he saw, you know, people were in bad conditions, he'd get a tear at the right time in the right spot, and by the, the end he'd give you a big hug if you were a woman, and, uh, and I'm sorry, if you're a person, and he, and you feel that, you know, he really understands my problem. Here's the difference with uh, Senator Obama. Senator Obama is more the professional analyst. I'm sorry to tell you of cancer. Now, here are three ways we can treat it. And I think it's, he's going to be distant a little bit, and he will be accused of being the leaders, which I think he is. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, as long as I'm considered part of the elite. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think you're going to see a very different kind of presidency because of the perception of the failures of George W. Bush in his second.